Hi everyone, I am Ma'am PC at kung nandito ka para sa educational video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell para lagi kang updated sa aking mga videos. Mwa, mwa, mwa. Para sa part 1 ng ating vertical analysis na tinatawag ding common size analysis, let's have statement of financial position. At dito, sa vertical analysis ng statement of financial position, what we measure are the portion of each account from its totality. Pag sinabi natin totality, dalawa lang naman ang total sa statement of financial position. Yung una is the total asset, yung pangalawa is the total liabilities and owner's equity. So, for example, yung buong bilog na ito ang bumubuo sa total assets or nagre-represent sa 100% at ang total asset ay binubuo ng current asset at non-current asset. So, the question is, ilang percent ng total asset ang current asset? And ilang percent ng total asset ang non-current asset? So, kapag nalaman na natin yung percentage nila, the second question is, if the current asset is higher than non-current asset, kapag daw yung percentage ng current asset ay mas mataas kaysa sa percentage ng non-current asset, what does it imply? Anong ibig sabihin nun? And what will you do? Anong kailangan gawin kapag ganun ang naging scenario? On the other hand, if the non-current asset is higher than current assets, what does it implies and what will you do? Same thing with the second situation for the total liability and owner's equity. Siyempre, ang bumubuo lang naman dito ay liability at owner's equity. So, kukuhanin lang din natin yung portion or percent ng liability to, uh, to the total liabilities and owner's equity and also the percent or portion ng owner's equity sa total liability and owner's equity. So, kapag nakuha na natin yung mga percentage nila, the next question is, if the liabilities has the higher portion, kapag daw mas mataas yung liability ng business, kaysa sa owner's equity, what does it implies? And what will you do? Same thing with, if the owner's equity has the higher portion, what does it implies and what will you do? At ang mga katanungan na yan ay sasagutin ng ating example for the vertical analysis of statement of financial position. For the example, gamitin ulit natin si Fidel Merchandising. Kung mapapansin nyo, ito din yung ginamit natin sa horizontal analysis. Oops, kung hindi nyo pa napapanood, panoorin nyo na. Nasa channel ko lang. So dito muna tayo sa part ng asset para mas malaki yung view natin sa screen. Sa so, nakikita nyo, dyan, si total asset. At yung totals natin, yan yung basis natin ng 100. So, lagyan natin sila ng 100%. Para makuha natin yung percentage ng mga iba pang account, ay gawin natin ito. Of the 2017 total assets, dito muna tayo kay 2017, what percent is cash? Ilan daw ang percent ng cash? So, para makuha natin, kuha naman na natin yung value ng cash. Then, i-divide natin sa total assets, multiplied by 100. Kapag tinipe nyo yan sa calculator, so ganito yung kakalabasan niya. 222.9 divided by 2,592.2 na value ng total asset, multiplied by 100. And we will get... Sige nga, pakitipe nga sa calcu at anong makukuha nyo? Okay, 8.6%. So, lagay natin, tapat ng cash sa percentage ng 2017. 8.6%. Next account, accounts receivable. So, ang gagawin lang natin dyan, accounts receivable, ang value niya, divided by total asset, multiplied by 100. Kapag tinipe natin yan sa calcu, ganito ang kalalabasan niya. 282.5 divided by 2,592.2 times 100. And we will get 10.9%. So, lagay natin dito, 10.9%. At ganun lang din yung gagawin natin sa mga susunod pang account. So, tuloy lang natin. For the inventory, 146.3 divided by 2,592.2, we will get 5.6%.
Yan, ganyan po siya kapag uh, tinipe natin sa calculator. Same thing with prepaid expense. Makukuha naman natin is 2.9%. For the total current asset, we will get 28%. For the non-current asset, isa lang naman ang account, yung PPE. That is 72%. Per percent? Okay, for the 2016, same question. Or, and same procedure. So, yung 332.2 natin divided by 1,221.6, we will get 27%. Then, for the accounts receivable ng 2016, 14.1%. Inventory is 7.6%. Prepaid expenses, 5.8%. Total current asset is 54.5%. And the property, plant, and equipment is 45.5%. Next page. So, sa ilalim na po ito, continuation lang. Liabilities and owner's equity. So, ang basis naman natin ng 100 dito is the total liability and owner's equity. Laging yung total lang. Yung dalawang total lang. So, lagyan natin ng 100. To get the percentage of current liabilities, let's take this question. Of the 2017 total liabilities and owner's equity, what percent is the current liability? So, what we're going to do is to get the value of current liability, which is 551.9, divided by 2,592.2, the value of total liabilities and owner's equity. And we will get 21.3%. So, nagay lang natin sa percent ng current liabilities is 21.3%. Same thing with the following accounts. For the loan payable, we have 70.3%, total liabilities 91.6%, and total owner's equity 84 So for the 2016 naman, of the 2016 total liabilities and owner's equity, what percent is current liability of 2016? So what we're going to do is to get the value of current liability, which is 620.6%. Divided by the value of total liability and owner's equity na 1,221.6. And we will get 50.8%. Same thing with the next accounts. For the loan payable, we have 30.8%. Total liabilities, 81.6%. And lastly, owner's equity, 18.4%. And ito yung kabuuan ng Statement of Financial Position Vertical Analysis. Yan. Sige, pakitignan mabuti, pakitake note, pakicheck yung uh, ginawa nyo kung tama at magkakamatch tayo ng sagot. Okay, now, para ma-interpret natin yung naging result, uh, we have to compare the percentage of the following account. First, uh, we have to compare the percentage of total current asset versus total non-current asset. So, yun, pag, pag kukumparahin natin. Second, uh, liability versus owner's equity. So, let's do this. So, ayan. Yung dalawa na yun, si total current asset and total non-current asset. At si total liabilities and owner's equity. Ito let points. Okay. For the round one, current asset versus non-current asset. Ting, 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 ting. Okay, kunin mo na natin yung percentage nila ng 2016 kasi yun yung nauna. So, mapapansin nyo, sa total current asset, we have 54.5% and in the red corner, non-current asset, we have 45.5%. For this period, ang mas mataas ay si total current asset. So, panalo si total current asset. Ding, 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 ding. Lagyan natin ng analysis. In 2016, the total current assets was 54.5% of the total assets, which is higher, mas mataas, than non-current asset with 45.5%. Bubble na. Okay, next. For the year 2017, kay total current asset is 28%, kay non-current asset is 72%. Kung mapapansin nyo, alin ang mas mataas? Di hamak naman na si non-current asset ang higher. 
So, lagay natin sa analysis. However, in 2017, the total non-current asset covered the 72% of the total asset, which make it higher than the total current asset with 28%. So, from this analysis, ano ang pwede nating ma-chismis? Ay, ma-conclude pala. So, let's make a conclusion. So, check muna natin yung mga current assets. So, we have cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and prepaid expense. For cash, yung value niya ng 2016 is 27%. Biglang baba ng 2017. Uh, up to, down to 8.6%. Same thing with accounts receivable. 14.1% down to 10.9%. Same thing with inventory. 7.6% bumaba ng hanggang 5.6%. Same thing with prepaid expenses. From 5.8, bumaba ng 2.9%. So, ang common denominator nilang lahat, lahat sila ay bumaba. Sana ang grades mo ay hindi. Sure. So, lagay natin ang conclusion. This might be due to the decrease in all accounts under current asset. Kaya, uh, biglang baba din si current asset. Check up naman natin si non-current asset. Biglang taas. Yung mga property, plant, and equipment. So, idagdag natin siya sa conclusion. And huge investment in the property, plant, and equipment of the business. So, those are our conclusions. Round 2. Ding, 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 ding. Total liabilities naman versus owner's equity. So, in this round, titignan natin where do most of the finances come from. So, saan ba nang galing yung... Uh, Halos lahat, halos lahat, pero hindi lahat, halos lang. Halos lahat ng capital or puhunan ng business. Kasi kapag nanggaling siya sa liabilities or mas mataas si total liabilities, ang puhunan or finances ng business ay mostly nanggaling sa mga creditors or pinagkakautangan. Pero kung mas ma uh, taas naman yung percentage ni owner's equity, ibig sabihin maganda yon kasi nanggaling siya sa mga owners. So, keep in mind na kapag total liabilities ang mas mataas, hindi siya favorable. Pero kapag owner's equity ang mas mataas, favorable siya. Maganda yon. That's a good connotation. So, let's find out. Round 2. So, let's go for the total liabilities and owner's equity. Sa 2016, so, ayan yung percentage ng liabilities ay 81.6%. Percentage ng owner's equity is 18.4%. Di hamak naman na malinaw na malinaw na pinaka or mas mataas, mas malaki ang percentage ni total liabilities. Mm. Second, par para sa 2017. Alagyan mo na pala natin ang analysis. Nakakalimutan ko, sorry, ako pala may gawa nito. In 2016, the total liabilities was 81.6% of the total liabilities and owner's equity, which is higher than the owner's equity with 18.4%. Okay, ito na talaga, 2017 na. So, mapapansin natin na ang total liabilities ay 91.6% versus the percentage of owner's equity, 8.4%. Malinaw na malinaw. Talo na naman ang owner's equity dahil mas mataas at mas malaki ang percentage ng total liabilities. So, lagay natin sa analysis. Then, in 2017, the total liabilities increased to 91.6% of the total liabilities and owner's equity, which is much more higher than the owner's equity with 8.4%. So, ano pwede nating ma-conclude? Diba sabi natin dito, kapag mas mataas ang total liabilities, creditors ang nagpa-finance or most of the finances are coming from the creditors. Then kapag owner's equity naman ang mas madaas, owners ang nagpa-finance mostly of the business. So dahil mas mataas ang um, liabilities for 2016 and 2017, walang duda na for the both years, yan, lagay natin sa conclusion, this signifies that the business was mostly financed by creditor and engaged in heavy borrowings. 
during both years. So, kung ganyan ang conclusion natin, what can we recommend? So, ang connotation kasi dyan, this is not a good connotation. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya maganda. Hindi siya favorable. Kasi, kung ang puhunan ng business ay mostly inutang lang, di ba? Hindi siya masyadong maganda. Kasi kapag na-bankrap or nalugi ang business, ang unang binabayaran niyan ay mga creditors. Susunod pa lang ang mga investors at owners. So, ibig sabihin kapag ang creditors ay naningil ng biglaan sa business at hindi niya kinaya ang paniningil, ay maaaring madisolve ang business at hindi na niya kaya ni na ang pag-o-operate. So, ang recommendation natin, the business must watch over its loan. So, bantay ang mabuti ang mga loans at nang makawala na, makahulagpos na sa pagkakautang ang business at maging solvent na siya and liquid as well while being profitable. ba? Diba? Yun lamang po. Sana ay kita-kita pa rin tayo sa part 2 na video. Ang link ay nasa description ng video na to. Special thanks to Lance Mendoza for editing my video and thank you sa mga students na nanonood. God bless everyone. Have a nice day.